Good morning, good morning. If there's anybody out there and you can hear my voice, come in. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. That uh, Psalm 118.24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Was the Israelites celebrating uh, King David you know, uh, coming in and, and becoming the next king. But you know what? In a greater sense, you know, we celebrate Jesus and his resurrection, his life and resurrection. And through him, we have eternal life. And so we celebrate this day because this is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. Hallelujah. Come in. Come in. Let's worship. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us, Lord, the privilege of being your sons and daughters, God. Kings, priests in your kingdom, in your family, God. We thank you, Lord. Father, we invite you in this place this morning, God. Holy Spirit, fill this room and move in a mighty way this morning, God. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise, Lord. Lift your voice and give him praise. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and invade this room. Invade our hearts, Holy Spirit. Take control, Holy Spirit. We give you free reign to do whatever you want, God. We give you praise, Lord. We lift your name up, Lord. There is no name greater than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, bless this service this morning, God. Father, as we come into your throne room of grace, Lord, as we come to worship you, Lord. Father, we pray that our worship, Lord, will be a sweet fragrance unto you, your nostrils, God. So, Father, we commit this day to you, Lord. We commit this service to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift your voices and join the worship team.
we're here for you, Lord. We're here to be with you, God, Lord, just to worship you, God, to lift you up, God, to adore you, God. Lord, we were made to worship you. with our lips, Father God, but with our hearts, with our actions, God, with all that we are, Father, we just want to worship you, God. Lord, remind ourselves the reason, God, that we come, the reason that we enter into your presence, God, is just to be where you are, Lord.
great are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your comforter, your helper. The pure support of the Holy Spirit. We thank you. We welcome you. Church, rejoice, church. Let's praise him. Uri under a sheet, did he under a sheet, did he under a sheet? Uri under a sheet, did he under a sheet, did he under a sheet? Am I worthy? Am I worthy for your praise? Holy of holies, King of kings. I gave you victory over death, eternal life. I give you. I ask for your heart, nothing less. I pray the Holy Spirit to be upon our leaders, our pastors. Father, that you anoint them, Lord. And let your word, Lord Jesus, be truth. Let your word be truth. Said. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Father, I pray in these days, Lord, that's short, that's soon. It's the early days, Father. I pray, Lord, that you strengthen us. Strengthen your church. Strengthen us, Father. Let us leave the world behind our flesh. Let us surrender everything. Surrender our whole selves to you, Father. Holy Spirit, again, I thank you. I thank you and welcome you in this, your church, Father your church Lord Jesus we thank you I pray for uh, Minister Vic Lord in Japan Lord I pray for the comforting of of the Prime Minister's family Lord that that they be comforted Lord Jesus and, and that one percent Lord Jesus that knows you in, in Japan Father let that light be so bright Lord that it will overcome Japan Bless Minister Vic, Lord, and, and the wife, Lord, that the mission, Lord Jesus, be all good. Because they love you. And they are called for your purpose accordingly. 
Let all good come to them, Lord. Bless them. Keep them safe. Give them favor, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for Madrid, uh, Sister Madrid Ricks, Lord. She had passed, she left us. Father, I pray for the family, Lord, that your Holy Spirit give only the only peace that we can have is through the Holy Spirit. Anoint them with peace and comfort, Father. Heal them. Yes. Bring them up, Lord Jesus, and recite them, Lord Jesus, that you are the, the truth, the way and the life, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. We love you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We commit this whole service to you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Morning is Communion Sunday. Yikes. If you didn't get your elements, just raise your hands and our ushers will get to you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kaimana. That was a powerful prayer. Thank you for praying for the Japan. Lifting up Japan. Going through the shock of the assassination of uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Abe. But let's remember our time together as we come to com the communion table to fellowship but also to remember what Jesus Christ has done amen that Jesus died on the cross I pray that we will never take for granted what Jesus has done amen sometimes we can get so familiar with what Jesus has done that we take it for granted and oh God help us if we have ever taken the cross for granted this morning if you're joining us online uh, you can go to your fridge, grab a piece of bread or a drink, and you can join us. Amen? Because it's not simply the act of what's doing. It's something happening in the spirit realm where we're thanking the Lord for His provision. And if you need a touch from the Lord this morning, I need a touch from the Lord as well. Oh, my back's sore. You know what I mean? Uh, if you need a touch from the Lord, claim God's, God's healing and provision. Amen? I'm going to ask Brother Kamana and uh, Brother Ron to come up. I'm going to ask Brother Kamana to pray for the bread. And I'm going to ask Brother Ron to pray for the cup. And so let's come to the table with a spirit of humility, with a spirit of thankfulness. You know, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes I, I just... Sometimes the feeling is gone, you know? I kind of relate it to my, my relationship with my wife. You know, I'm, I'm married to my wife, amen? But uh, thank God I am, hallelujah. Still am right now, but... <laughs> but sometimes the feeling's not there, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if you guys are like me, but sometimes I, I don't feel the love, yeah? But I'm still committed. I'm still committed to her and so it comes around when it comes to our anniversary I kind of reminisce of what it was like but love is not based on feelings amen love is based on commitment whether you feel like it or not and I still cherish it and so when we come to communion sometimes I say Lord where's the feeling but you know what it's not based on the feelings it's based on my commitment to what jesus christ has done for me and says lord i am so thankful despite i don't feel like what it was like in the first when i first came to you to the lord but lord i'm grateful i'm grateful and he's still the same it's never changed and so today as we got to the table i said lord search my heart make sure that when I come to the table I'm qualified you know and so I want to come with a humble heart a heart that is grateful a heart that is thankful for what you've done and so this morning as we just ponder on the cross I say thank you Lord for all that you've done that I was once lost I was wretched 
had no hope. I was broken. I had no hope. I was in despair. But you came at just the right time. Just at the right place. Came and reached out to me and saved. And so this morning, I want us to remember the time when Jesus came into your life. You see the, the beauty of the cross. And the Bible tells us, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when we take that bread, May we remember that Jesus' body was broken for us that we might be made whole. Many of you know somebody who needs a touch from the Lord. Stand on their behalf. Stand on your behalf as Brother Kamana prays. Let's lift the bread before the Lord. And let's join together with Brother Kamana. Praise. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you have done, Lord, on the cross for us, Lord, and took all, everything, Lord Jesus. Thank you everything for for us to be sustained and, and securing us not only here but in eternity for us yes. we thank you we thank you for the sacrifice lord thank you that, that you you made for us father hallelujah your unlimited love that's shown your pure love that's shown lord what you have done father thank you for taking all our burdens all our hurts yes thank lord. you for breaking all the chains and all the bondage thank you lord yes father we thank you we thank you lord we thank you for everything you have done lord. Yes. in jesus name bless this bless this in jesus name amen let's partake together the cup also after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it remembrance of me let's lift up the cup before the lord is brother on praise thank you jesus father we thank you for the precious blood of jesus thank you lord thank you lord that the, the blood brings life brings healing and forgiveness represents the Lamb of God that was slain oh, gave gosh. his life and shed Thank his blood you. for the forgiveness of our sins that Thank we may you. have eternal life with you Father God we thank you Lord but Father as we take Lord as we remember Lord bless yes. this cup God as we remember what Jesus did thank you Lord Amen. thank you let's partake together let's sing that song
Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Worship Him. Awesome. Bless Him with. Awesome. Worthy is the Lamb. Praise God. Uh, let's turn our attention to the screen for our announcements. So we do weekly Bible studies on different universities, and so we have students that are coming for the first time. This one girl I remember, um, as she opened the Bible, she was like, is this a real Bible? I've heard about the Bible before, but I've never ever seen one before. And then the next, by the second week, she was like, I think this book is going to change my life, and maybe I, maybe I need to go to church. And I'm just so grateful because I get to have the privilege to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people for the very first time. They're opening God's word for the very first time. And how exciting it is that, that I get to be a part of that. So we need more workers in Japan. We need help in Japan. And we're so thankful that First Assembly is raising up another team to go. Would you prayerfully consider joining that team? If you are willing to go and help us in Japan, in Kyushu, please contact Pastor Ernie, and we're looking forward to seeing you in Japan.
Aloha. Now that our 75th anniversary is history, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who went the extra mile to make it a huge success. I want to thank especially the 75th anniversary administrators, pastors, maintenance staff, and the army of volunteers who showed up to help with the renovation projects, the flooring, the painting, the church cleanup day, set up, breakdown, decorating for the luau, the rehearsals, leading worship, the cultural dancers, the volunteers who came in to prepare and serve the food, help with childcare, sound, video, light, and hosting our VIP. Now I'm sure I forgot something, but I want to let you know God never forgets the good works you do for Him. I cannot thank you enough for the way you help to honor the past, celebrate the present, and to imagine the future. It was an awesome sight to witness the hundreds of youth and young adults being prayed for by the older generation and to receive this special 75th anniversary challenge coin. We have a few left over, so if you want to stop by in the foyer to buy one for $10, please be sure to do that before you leave today. Lastly, I'm so excited about the new logo and brand refresh. Make sure you stop by the Resource Center and to check out the cool limited merchandise we ordered for our launch. We have beautiful hats, we have a mug, we have windbreakers, we have hoodies, and uh, we want you to be wearing this and remember, we are here for you first. God bless you. And that's all for today. Be sure to stay connected with news and updates by going online to firstaog.com or through our church app. Be blessed and aloha. Praise God. The change is good. Yeah. We need it. Whatever it is. You know, if it's to give God the full the full glory, it, it needs to be done. Yeah. But um just a reminder, um uh, the new image that we have at the at the radio radio church will be um over there for purchasing the new logos, the hats, what you just saw. Uh, I want to touch on, um, just in case, uh, like Pastor said, he might have forgot, you know, thanking people. Just want to, I want to thank everybody for, like, helping on the 75th anniversary. I mean, you know, um, through the Holy Spirit, you know, that's the only way we can, we can do things and strengthen us. I just want to say thank you. Um, all night prayer. Um, Friday, 7 p.m. starts. Um, if you haven't um, uh, attended the 75th anniversary, um, there's that historial book. Um, if you didn't get it last week, you can come by tonight on tonight's service and and um, take claim of it. Um, also, uh, worship ministry uh, will be offering a worship um, mentorship training. Um, if you got talents, everybody got talents. You know, we just need to um, bring it out. Everybody, everybody, everybody can sing. You know that because we we sing to glorify God. So everybody can sing. Uh, come out, and it is uh, more information on our website. Um, again, uh, come tonight. Come back tonight at Red Hill Church as Jer Jeremy um, Anderson. Uh, we'll give his word. Uh, he'll be speaking to the Holy Spirit, and we pray upon that. Uh, this time, uh, we're going to receive our tithes and offering. Brother Sam, if you, if you need any um, envelopes, put your money inside. Uh, QR code. If you high tech, you can do them this way. I mean, we got to change, right? God said, um, give your first tithes, your first earnings, your first increase to him. And um, 
not just because you know not just giving um, sparingly he said also that you give sparingly that's what you get sparingly yeah it's what you what you weep um, I give because I love Christ you know and remember the greatest commandment I can keep saying this over and over love God with all your heart mind soul and strength that's everything so your finances if you have no faith cannot please God that's what he said faith in your finances give up faith yeah let's all pray Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for providing for being our source for all our resources Father we thank you we thank you for um, um, giving us all what we need Lord and to sustain us Father and, and, and it's not much Lord it's not much Lord but Lord I pray Lord that the heart Lord Jesus the giving of the heart Lord is the main purpose Lord that we give Father bless those who give bless those who cannot Lord let them serve Lord and be labor Lord to you Father I pray this Lord and expand your kingdom Father Use this to expand, Lord. Triple and multiply folds over, Lord, this, this offering, Lord. We all ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. We're in a new season. Wow. Wasn't it great? The 75th anniversary. Wasn't it wonderful? Amen. We want to welcome those who are online as well. Thank you for joining us. And uh, it was really neat because uh, when I met uh, Pastor Sayaka's parents, you know, it was really neat because they, look at, they looked at me and said, hey, you're the guy on TV. And um, I, I, I kind of pushed it off and brushed it aside because, you know, it's like big deal, right? I mean, I, I watch myself. I, I'm like, I, I, I actually, it hurts for me to watch myself actually online. So, so I was like, you know, but believe it or not, uh, people are actually watching. And the way the world sees us, especially when they see us on line, it's like you're a celebrity. Not really. I mean, you know what I mean? But it's like, and they tell me, it's like, you know, it's no big deal. But I, I started thinking about it. All they do is they see me online. And, and when they meet me in person, it's like, hey, you're a guy on TV. And so it's really a blessing. We don't know the extent of our influence. Because Pastor Sayaka, she would go to her parents' house and they would watch with their parents, her parents. And she would interpret with them, for them. And... And he would always say, if someone would introduce myself and congratulate, hey, you're the guy on TV, you're the guy on TV. And I was tempted to say, let him autograph too or what, you know, but <laughs> I didn't want to do that. And then one kid, um, uh, Sister Karen, uh, she texted me during service, says, can you call me right after service? And I said, okay, well, no, I hope it's nothing, you know, serious. So I called her, my wife reminded me, I called her up and... Uh, can you come over because my grandson i think is ready to accept jesus christ and so i came over and the moment i drove in the the grandson said hey you're the guy on tv it's like whoa wow <laughs> no biggie but you know but I, I realized how impactful online services are are you know so whether you're praying or worshiping it's incredible how uh, the extent of uh, how, the influence of social media so what a blessing also of course, we celebrated Victor and uh, Pastor Sayaka's wedding this weekend. It was wonderful. Uh, it was amazing, and uh, it was <laughs> it was it was a blessing. And so we're gonna truly miss him. And we're praying for the outreach team that they would have um, somebody to lead this team in the process. I have to step in, but I can't. I can't do as much as Victor did, you know, but uh, we have to do that. And food for friends. So there's openings uh, for uh, those who want to lead. If you're, you're feeling, uh, you pray, you pray about that. And uh, we were praying that we would continue the work of reaching our community uh, on, on Saturdays. They meet. And so we're praying that you would be able to step up. If anybody has a burden to lead this team, then praise God. Let me know. Come see me uh, after the service. And so let's continue the work that's been done. And there's no success without a successor. Amen? That's the Jesus principle. If you leave and you leave it empty, then you're not a success. Amen? If you leave, you have to fill in. Because Jesus did that, didn't he? When he left to go to heaven, what did he do? He left the disciples. And when the disciples went, they incredibly changed and transformed. And that's what we talked about, imaginations being transformed. And so with Victor leaving, the successor is, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We will find him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, if you have your Bible, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 42. And I uh, pray that the Lord would speak to your, to your hearts as we get into the word. Uh, what a wonderful uh, logo that we do have, Faya. Amen, Faya. I like the way Pastor Suping says, Faya, F-A-Y-A, -A, not fire, Faya, okay? Uh, beautiful logo. How many of you notice the logo? If you look at the logo, how many actually, what, what do you see on the logo? Of course, you see a fire, but uh, do you see the F on that? Did you know that there's an F on that fire? Yeah, just look at it. Buy the shirt and look at it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to see it. Some of you guys are going on, now you're going on text. Okay, let me see that. And there's three points, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What, there is? Yeah, go take a look at it. 
But if you see anything else, let me know. You know, uh, I'm I'm trying I'm I'm staring at it and I'm staring at it and see what it what it looks like. But it's incredible new logo. And many of you may not realize the the old logo was the campaign the, our campaign to possess the land, and it stuck with us. So they really we really didn't have a logo. We had a few of them in between, like you know, like a Bible with the trade wind, palm trees flowing, a new wind blowing, uh, but. When we begin our campaign to possess the land, which is Red Hill property, uh, the, the logo for that was the cross on the hill. Because Red Hill, right, is going to establish the church on the hill. But it stuck with us. So we really never had a logo since we entered into possessing the land. And so this is really the, uh, the beginning of a new brand. So fire. Amen. But you can never depart from what? The cross. Amen? The cross is always the central focus of everything. Uh, Paul said, I, will much, I must preach the cross and him crucified. Well, let's go to uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 4, 5 through 7. And for those online, welcome. We love you. Uh, we thank you for uh, joining with us. And if Minister Victor and Pastor Soyaki, if you're watching us online, wherever you guys are, I think you guys are probably in the mainland, Welcome you, Ekomo Mai. Uh, thank you. We love you. We miss you. And congratulations. And uh, let us know when you're coming back. Or if we're coming to Japan, we'll let you know because I know you have an extra room uh, in your house. So uh, <laughs> so we're coming. No, not really. Uh, one day, if you guys are in Japan, you have a place to stay. Actually, I'm inviting our church to you guys. But, <laughs> that's, but that's okay. I know they would love to have you. Uh, and that would be a blessing to the church as well. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 4. And I'll be reading from 5 to 7 as well. And our message, our, our title today is A Light to the Nations. A Light to the Nations. Let's go to chapter uh, 42 of Isaiah. It says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. And he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. Verse 4. He will not be disheartened or crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands will wait expectantly for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have also hold you by the hand and watch over you. I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as light, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and those who dwell in darkness from the prison, from the prison. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to any graven, graven image. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, this morning. Speak to our hearts, we pray, as we go and look into your word. It's not uh, through just the letter of the word, but by the spirit that brings clarity and understanding. We need your Holy Spirit. Help us to understand. Open our eyes. They might bring about transformation that we might be able to be a light to the nations pray in jesus name and everyone agreement said amen so we're entering into a new season a new theme of bringing transformation uh to the nations a light to the nations and if you look at it in chapter 41 it kind of leads into chapter 40, 42 but in chapter 41 you'll notice uh isaiah sees a court scene he he creates a court scene where he asks the question who can bring justice to the world so he gives us a picture of a court and he brings the question who can bring justice to the world and who can affect justice and who can set things right and the bible tells us that god is the judge he's the persecuting attorney but not only that he's the jury he's everything so here we have a court that isaiah paints for us and there's a court scene and God calls on the nation. Why? Because, uh, because the earth is messed up. I mean, they're, they're pretty much broken. They're suffering, struggling humanity. And how many of us know, if you look at our world today, it's pretty messed up. It's upside down. 
us. I mean, it is pretty bad. Everything that you look at, I mean, you look at social media, I mean, there is so much, uh, it's kapakahi, it's crooked. I mean, it's totally in darkness. And God calls a nation because you look at humanity, it's pretty messed up. And God calls a nation. He asked them. He calls the Gentile nations. In fact, if you look at it, uh, it's a court scene. You go to the next one, please. Uh, yeah. So he calls on the Gentiles and he calls the West and the East. The West is from is the Mediterranean area, the Mediterranean coast. And then he calls the Mesopotamians. And he calls them, and he brings them before the court and says, what is your answer? He calls the nations, give an answer, and he says, give me a solution to the problems that face mankind. So here, he brings the, the nations before the court, and God asks him, what is the solution to the ills and corruption and troubles of mankind? You know what? They don't give an answer. Because they don't have an answer. They don't. It's just, they're just messing things. How, he says, how can we heal the broken? How can we heal the suffering, the struggling humanity? And you know what? They have nothing to say. These, I want you to see now, these are the great thinkers of this age. The people upon most of them look to. And if you look at Isaiah chapter 41, verse 28 to 29, it gives his, it gives his verdict. Pick this, pick this out. He says, but when I look, there is no one. There is no counselor among them who, if I ask, can give an answer. Behold, all of them are false. Their works are nothing. Their, their, their cast metal images are wind and emptiness. But, see, the nations have no answer. They have no answer to the world's problem. But then another person shows up. In the court. The nations came before the court of God. God, God said, show me the answer. What is the solution? They have no answer. Then, another one. Look at uh, chapter uh, 42 of Isaiah, verse 1. He calls on, what? Behold, the servant. The servant of the Lord. And I really believe in order for us to bring about transformation to the nations. And when we talk about the nations, I'm not just thinking about globally. I'm really thinking about how can we reach our community our society, our neighborhood, even our family. So when we talk about something that's globally, I'm not really, it seems like we're so detached by saying nations, but really, how can we affect those around us, really? You know, and make, make an impact. And so here we find in chapter uh, 42, verse 1, it says, Behold my servant whom I uphold. Then what happens? The Lord brings forth into the courtroom. He is the servant of of the Lord. And in fact, you know the Jews, they really understood this as the Messiah. You can put, behold my servant, the Messiah. See, the Jews understood that this servant was the Messiah, but they didn't know who the Messiah was. But they really believed that the one that could bring solution to the ills and to the corruption and to the wickedness of mankind was what? The servant of the Lord. You know what the Lord does is he fixes our attention on the one who was designated to be the servant of the Lord. Getting our, our eyes off the thoughts and philosophies and all the other solutions. Uh, but yet, we need to ask the question, who is the servant of the Lord? And really, when you think about it, the servant of the Lord is Jesus. We are called upon to look to him because the only answer to the, the world's problem is who? Is really Jesus. In order for us to bring about transformation, we are called to look upon what the solution, that solution. It's not a philosophy. It's not a method or a strategy. Really, think about it. The solution to humankind's problems is who? Jesus. Jesus is the answer to bring about transformation in our nations today. It's known, you know, there are books and books and books of how to bring about transformation. But you know what? You can take that and it's not going to happen. You know why? Because it's not about strategies or information. It's about a person. That person is in Jesus Christ. He is the servant. I want us to take a look at this servant. Look at Isaiah 42, verse 1 through 4. How many of you heard a strategy and your life was transformed? No way. I can talk to every one of you whose life has been transformed. And the reason why is because of who? It's Jesus. Jesus is the one who is able to transform nations. 
He can transform lives. He can transform families. He can transform communities. He can transform nations as a result of that. But let's take a look at what this servant looks like. Oh, sorry, I huh? think so smart. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I put him on my PowerPoint, but it looks big. But when you put him online, it looks kind of small. But those online, I know you can watch it. I mean, you can read it. But for us, you can turn to your Bibles. Uh, it says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. And I put my spirit upon him and will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice. Notice this. Nor make his voice heard in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. And a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not be disheartened or crushed until he has established justice on the earth. And the coastlands will wait expectantly for his law. How many of you see in these few passages, there's one word that really stands out. It's the word justice. The Bible tells us that he would bring what? Justice into what? The world. And you know, that's a powerful word, justice. In fact, when I say I think of a kid because a, fa uh, a parent, uh, he used to go to Christian Academy. His name was Justice. So when I say Justice, I think about him. But I shouldn't be thinking about him. That word Justice is a powerful word if you think about it. Three times it's mentioned in that servant, the, in that the servant will bring justice. In other words, this is what the word Justice means. This is the one, Jesus, or the servant of the Lord, who will set things right. See, that's what the word does. See, many of you heard people, well, I pray that justice will be served. Really, that word justice is one who set things right. He will establish things as they what ought to be. See, when Jesus comes, amen, he sets things right in our lives. That's what he does. He established things as they ought to be. You know, before I, even before I came to Jesus, man, I was doing things that was totally wrong i mean totally messed up totally crooked but when i came to jesus guess what he established things as i supposed to be not uh, not instantaneous but he began to set me right and i began to walk that right path in fact there are two terms in the bible that kind of goes uh together that term righteousness and justice because the bible tells us that we are to be a light to the nations by being a light to the nations. It's through Jesus that he brings about what? Justice. Justice is one who set things right. And what? He also established things as they ought to be. And so the word righteousness in the Old Testament means to bring a thing into conformity with a standard or a norm. You see that? It says it means to bring into conformity with a standard or or a norm so what you're doing is if it's if you see kind of like this is how it looks like and this is how you begin you ever seen like some things that uh, people create it's amazing what people can do you know they have it this is a picture and they can create it uh to what it's supposed to be that's what righteousness is it it means to bring the thing into conformity with a standard or a norm in other words, it would refer, it, check this out, it refers to weights that were accurate as righteous weights. Huh? It's kind of neat, yeah? It's, it's like, I have to think about that because remember now, they're talking in, in, in context of their time because it was agricultural society. And so when they use the word righteousness, it refers to weights that accurate are, were as accurate as righteous weights. If you look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 11, you can see a reference uh, here. In Proverbs 16, verse 11, it says, A just balance and scales belong to what? The Lord. All the weights of the bag are his concern. If you look at it straight up, you may not understand it, but you know in agricultural, you know how they made transactions, which is amazing? They did transactions by what? By weight. You know when they did any kind of transactions, uh, most of it, if not all, everything was sold by weight. How I many of you, you know, I try to find the cheapest place where I can buy food. <laughs> and everybody said, amen. Uh, you know, uh, you go to Whole Foods, you go to Chinatown, you have a choice, man. And I realized, I realized, oh, Chinatown is a pretty good deal. But you go to Chinatown, the bananas are cheap. You know, you go to Chinatown. 
But you know, sometimes you know, I go in there, you know, you know, you know. Of course, you know, Chinatown is China, China, right? Chinatown, you know, and <laughs> yeah, and you go into some of the places, and so how? And you look at the stock price, like oh, ninety nine cents one pound for apple bananas. Like, Whoa, that's so cheap! So I go in, you know, I I take my bananas off the rack because they hang them all on display outside, right? You know, I love that. It's like you know another world, you know, somewhere in the third world country. But I love going to Chinatown. But anyway, I I take a banana, you know, I go inside, and then I say, so how much? You know what they do? You put it on a digital weight. When you put them on a digital weight, it tells you how much price. And you know, I don't know about you, but for me, I think about okay, these guys. I don't know if they're giving me the right price. You know, they go to the process, did, 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 you know, and like, and like what? What? Five ninety five for this small piece? I don't say that outwardly, but it's like, oh, and I like, I kind of like, hmm. I mean, inside, I'm like, hmm. I wonder if they changed, you know, the the price weight, you know, so they're getting more for their money, their for their banana than I'm paying. I'm paying like about maybe one pound, but they're giving actually me half a pound of banana. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, something's wrong here. So I'm questioning these people because I don't know if they're ripping me off because it's digital. But in the agricultural society, they didn't have digital. You know what they had? Weights. But you know, for those conniving, corrupted businessmen, they would have rocks of certain weight. And they would bring their stuff and put it on the scale and they're being one pound of rock like that. But they don't know if the rock is one pound. You know what I mean? And so they would put the one pound in the put the ah. Oh, mm. So they would uh, you're paying for one pound, but actually it's maybe about 0.75 pound. Oh, sir, they're making about 25 uh, 0.25 profit. But when somebody questions, it, hey, I think you're ripping me off. Then, no, this is one pound. You know where they would measure it. In order for them to keep these people accountable, you know what they did? I, I noticed as I studied this, they, they would, they call it, um, uh, the standard of measure, how they kept it was consistent by, uh, was by having the temple regulating them. So the temple had the real one pound rocks. And so what they would do is, I'm going to report you, but they didn't have a standard because if you don't have a standard, Anybody in that community would say, oh, that's one pound. It was, oh, that's one pound. But the standard was because they could trust the temple because that's where the place of integrity was. So you know what they would do? Uh -huh. Give me that rock. They would probably take that rock. Give me that. So they would take it to the temple and say, hey, I think this guy is crooked. So, do it. so the, the priest would take that rock. Let's find out if he really is. He would take that rock, put it on the scale, and put the, other, put the temple rock. That really is one pound accurate. They would put it on the scale and they would measure it. If it goes like this, they would look at them and then they would get fined. They would get crooked. I mean, it's like, ha. Ah. It said, ha ha. Just as I thought, that person is crooked. That's why it says here, uh, righteousness. If you look at the word righteousness, it says it would refer to weights that were accurate as weights. They would conform to a norm or a standard. You guys see that? That's why righteousness is like, that's the real deal. That's the way. In fact, if you think about it, the word glory, if you look in kabod, it carries what? Weight. That's what it means. The word glory means what? Weight. It carries a lot of weight. That's the standard. And it basically, let me give you an example. In the Old Testament, the evergreen trees, the Bible tells us, are described as trees of righteousness. How many of you have heard that before in the Bible, right? If you read it in the book of Psalms, trees of righteousness. In fact, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, evergreen trees were described as uh, trees of righteousness because they always looked as a tree ought to look. You ever seen uh, what an evergreen looks like? On the left side is the right standard. That's how a tree looks like. The wrong standard is right there, the other tree. So many of us, when we came to the Lord, was the tree in the winter, like that. But see, righteousness set the stand. This is how we're supposed to look. Amen? On the left side. Amen. You guys see that? Those online, do you see that? Or how many of us look like 
the other tree. So righteousness, our example of righteousness is supposed to look like Jesus. That's how we're supposed to look like, amen? But the Lord uses evergreens as what? That's an example of what trees of righteousness. This is how it look like. And we bring our tree before the Lord and say, Lord, this is my tree. But I'm going to look at Jesus like, oh, that's how I look. That's what righteousness. And we are being transformed into it like that. You see that? You guys get that? Say amen. And praise the Lord. It's great, yeah? I, I learned something as I was studying this. But in the Old Testament, the standard, you know what the standard is in the Old Testament? It's the character of God. The character of God. In the New Testament, guess who it is? Hallelujah. It is who? Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the standard. He is our righteousness. So righteousness means bringing something into conformity with the character of God. So when we trans, when, when God brings about transformation in the nations, guess what? He's transforming society into the likeness of what? The kingdom of God. That's what he's doing. When righteousness prevails, when people are being changed and transformed one by one, guess what? But when we see darkness and we see the, the wrong standard, when the wrong tree begins to impose itself, guess what's happening? There's a greater uh, opposition of darkness moving in and bringing about transformation, which is totally wrong. The crooks are coming in. They're giving what the wrong standard. This is how the standard, and you know what happens? It says, no, this is not. Let's go back to the temple. But you know what? They're stopping us from really going back. Why? Because they're saying what is right is now wrong. What is wrong is right. But it says, hey, let's get back to what integrity, what the word of God is. Because today there is no standard anymore. Everything is more relative, right? Ah, there is no standard. And it took God out of the picture so that they could actually instill what? So they could live their life crooked or they can begin to prevent it. Hey, guys, they're bringing drag queens into elementary schools. Oh, if you can bring that, can we bring the Bible as well? Oh my gosh. So what they're doing is they're bringing in the rocks that are not the right weight and bringing perversion and confusion. I'm talking allegory metaphors now. But you guys get the picture, right? I'm talking in pictures so you guys get the point. And that's so important. In fact, if you look at uh, justice, justice is the outworking of righteousness. Justice is the outworking of righteousness. In fact, it is the action by which the king or some other person brings about a state of righteousness in the nation. See, if you look at this, a perfect example is Josiah. I mean, many of you remember Josiah. Some of you guys know that when, it, uh, when I said, oh, when I have a boy, I'm going to name my son Josiah. Amen. That's what I said. But when I heard so many other people naming their son Josiah, okay, I changed my mind. Because everybody's named Josiah now. Beautiful name. Why? Because Josiah was an incredible man of God. But if you look at it, here it says, it is the action. So justice is the practical application of righteousness. A perfect example is Josiah. If you look at 2 Kings chapter 20, 22 to 8, 8, 13. I want you to understand now, okay. Josiah was 8 years old. He was 8 years old when he became king. And this, this nation that he was governing was 70 years into idol worship. Remember now, 70 years of idol worship, and it was a, and the, the leadership was godless. The nation was totally corrupt. I mean, they didn't have a heart after God. An eight-year-old goes in, takes the reign, and he finds out, eight years old now, he desires to do what was right. But I want you to take a look at 2 Kings chapter 22. Remember now, they hid the rocks. They hid the right way. It lo the rocks of the temple got lost. You guys see that? And so, because the rocks of the temple was lost, everything got messed up. Idol worship, godless leadership, this is what happened. Then Hilkiah the priest said to Saphan, the scribe, I found what? The rocks, hallelujah. They found the rocks. I found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Where was the rocks found? It was found in what? The house, amen. And Hilkiah, oh, Hilkiah gave the book to Saphan who read it. Then 
what you know what the you know what the enemy does? He takes the book out of the schools, takes the books out anywhere from the government. Take out the Ten Commandments. Take out the rocks, right? Because they know if you can take out the rocks, they can mess up the scale system. But if you put the rocks back, they have no justification because that sets the line. Because if you want to transform a nation backwards, you got to take out the rocks. And they're going to put in their own rocks and start messing it up. But here we find in Safe and the, the scribe came to the king and brought back word to the king and said, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have handed it over to the workmen who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Moreover, Safin the scribe informed the king, saying, Helkiah the priest has given me a book, and Safin read it in the presence of the king. Go to the next one. And when the king heard the words of the law, when he heard that the weight of the, uh, of, of the rocks was true, he tore his clothes, and the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam the son of Saphan, the, and Akbor the son of Micaiah, Saphan, the scribe, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and all Judah concerning the words of the book that has been found, for the wrath of the Lord burns against us is great. Because our fathers did not listen to the words of this book to act in accordance with everything that is written regarding us. So what did he do? He began to what? Appropriate justice. What? And began to line itself with what? The righteousness of God. It is by the action by which the king or some other person brings about a state of righteousness in the nation. How many of you remember? My gosh, when you came to the Lord, all of a sudden you realized, what? You mean what I was doing was wrong? And guess what you do? You did. You changed. And you what? You appropriated practically justice into your life and line everything up in conformity with what? The standard of God. And you know, if you see that, see, that's what happens because our nation is in a battle for its soul. You see that? Because what happened was they removed the rocks from the school, they removed the rocks from the government, took them all out, and they instituted all this. Uh, they started cheat, dealing with the scales, so nobody knows what's right or wrong anymore. Everybody's like flaky. Everybody just goes with what the food. They said it's, everything's relative. There's no principle. There's no absolutes. There's no God as a result of that. But Isaiah said, the servant of the Lord will bring about what? Justice in the Lord. That's why we need to bring Jesus into what? The transformation. He's saying that he will establish things according to the right standard. Things will be as they ought to be. Whether we're talking about our homes, our society, or ourselves, it is the servant of the Lord who is the only one who can get things aligned with God's standard. No one else. There's no alternative to the servant of the Lord. We can think of anything. The hope for America, guys, really, is that we have to place back the stones in our nation. What are resources? What did God give? The servant is the Lord is the one who gets things aligned with God's standard, and no one else can. What are the resources that God gave the God's servant? Number one is this. He, upheld, he was upheld by God. The only way we can bring about transformation to the nations is through Jesus, but with us as believers, we need to be upheld by God. God upheld the servant of the Lord. That word upheld really derives its strength from the Father. Jesus derives his strength where from the far. There's no way we can do it without God's strength, amen? We need God's strength. The term uphold means to take hold of something. It means to strengthen someone by taking a grip on them. Jesus gets his strength where? From the Father. We normally think of the Lord since he is God as sufficient. You know, say, ah, this Jesus. No, he was not strong in himself. He experienced all of the weaknesses, the limitations of the flesh apart from sin. Therefore, he understands our limitations. So he went through it just like us. But he himself had to depend, Jesus had to depend on the Father for his strength. There's no way. Because the battle is, the battle is there. The battle is real. That's why we need the supernatural strength, what? Of the Lord. There was, uh, there was a way that he could carry out the ministry, but the Father had given. God gave him a way to carry it out. But the one other resource that God gave, he gave the Lord, even for us as believers, strength. You have the strength of the Lord if you will stand for righteousness. Not only that, what are some of the resources that he was specifically chosen by God? The servant 
is the Father's chosen one who delights the Father. I want you to understand that you are God's chosen one. Every one of you are God's chosen. Long before Jesus ever did a thing, remember, he was assured of the love and approval and delight of the Father. Guys, I just pray that we would understand that. No matter what you've done or what you will do, whether you, 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 you're successful or you're, you failed, God still loves you. God still approves of you. God still delights in you because he loves you. No matter what, he will always love you, no, no matter what you've done. We are assured. And you know why? Because when we go out into the world, when we preach the gospel, when we go out into the streets, when we share our faith, oh, guys, you know, you know when I first shared my first track, I was so passionate. I wanted to tell people about Jesus. You know, I remember I, was, I used to work for, uh, they call it, we used to work for Kahala Kai. Uh, I was in high school. I was a surfer guy. I wanted to work, easy job, make money, right? So I used to work. I used to work for Kalakai Services. I would, I would basically, I would deliver pictures. I would go to the restaurant. They would take pictures. They would give me the film. I would take it back to the Photoshop. Wait for the pictures. Run back. That's all I did. Easy job, right? But I was so passionate. I was saved. I just wanted to share my faith. So in between, I would get tracks. I would get tracks. And I would like, I would say, okay, I'm gonna share my tracks. I'm gonna share tracks because that's. I figured I didn't know how to witness, so I just wanted to share tracks. So I get my tracks. I said, okay. So I would go. I would, I would look at. It. Okay, that's the person right now. I'm about to go, and all of a sudden, I make a U-turn. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you know, I was so scared. You know, it's hard. You know? And I would go, okay, okay, psych myself. Psych, psych, psych. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. All of a sudden, I would go up to the person. Like, like oh, my gosh. And, uh, uh, getting better. Not a U-turn, but make an L-turn. Yeah, you know? And all of a sudden, next time, I did it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What a release. Oh, I did it. It was an incredible experience. I had to tell somebody about the Lord. But you know what? You know what I was most fearful? I was fearful. You know why it was so hard for me? Because I was fearful of being what? Rejected. Oh, my gosh. See, if I knew and understood that the Lord loves me no matter what, that's, that's the most important thing. I don't care I get rejected. I remember taking our youth group, and that's a youth pastor. I would take all our kids. We'd do, we would call a night insomnia, insomnia, where nobody sleeps for 24 hours. You sleep, you're game. People can mark marshmallow on your face, but, you know, anything. You can do anything except for the drivers. We were the drivers. You can't touch the drivers because you have to sleep, you know. So we had to go up. And one of, our, one of our activities was to take them from the zoo all the way to Ilikai, and they had to pass out only only 10 tracks and there's thousands of people on the streets right so we take them out from and it was called insomnia never do that again uh, <laughs> this pastor would not allow it I said, what are you guys doing um so we would do it and some of the kids interesting some of the kids that would you know some of them were like oh god ho you know oh we can do it but some of the kids i mean like they would go up to and they would come to me pastor mel pastor mel i was rejected my gosh, you know, and for them, it was hard for them uh, to um, receive rejection. But it kind of told me about how their upbringing was. Some of them who were secure was not, uh, was not affected. Oh, Pastor Mel, you know how much I was? 32 times. And they were like, yes. You know, some of them, like, oh, Pastor Mel, man, I cannot even pass one track. My gosh, it's hard, you know. But when you know that you've been chosen by God, He loves you, He approves of you, He delights you no matter what. Hey, that wouldn't even affect the way you actually what you do, you know. And I really believe it's a test. That's why you come out on Saturdays with the outreach team and really find out if you really um uh, can handle rejection. Um, and I appreciate this team. This is team is incredible. I mean, for them to be able to go to door to door and knock on the door and get rejected twenty times and you're still knocking. Why? Because they know who they are in Jesus. Because God delights them and God has chosen them. And God loves them no matter what. That makes you what? Secure. Amen? Are you secure? Amen. Like the, people would tease me when I wear a pink shirt. Oh, Pastor Mel, look at you. You got a pink shirt. My kids would tease me. I tell them, I am secure. Amen? Hallelujah. It's like, it's like Ben wearing an orange shirt. He's secure. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, Ben, you're secure, amen. You guys can't see it online, but Ben's wearing a bright orange shirt. Hallelujah. When you go hunting, you can't miss him. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I am secure in what? Everybody say, I am secure. I am. 
Amen, because you are chosen by the Lord. And lastly, one of the resources, he possesses the Spirit of God. He possesses the servant is empowered because he possessed the Spirit. I put my Spirit, what? Upon him. When, you, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you know what that means? He gives you a divine anointing for a specific purpose. See, we have the Spirit upon in us today because we're not in the Old Testament, but in the, in the Old Testament, the Spirit would come, what? Upon them to do what? A specific task. But today, I really believe we have the Spirit of God in us, but I really believe God places the Spirit upon us as well, what to do a specific task as well. I really believe that. Uh, to anoint us for a specific uh, purpose. And it's the ministry of the Spirit of God he described there. And, and I think I'm running out of time. So, but in verse 2, how does the, uh, the servant conduct himself? Notice this. He says, he will not cry out, verse 2, or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the streets. Do you realize that he didn't? One thing about Jesus is so amazing. And I, when I was in Israel, this is, what, this is what I've learned. He didn't demand recognition. He didn't publish daily reports in the general Jerusalem Post. He didn't talk about what he did. He did, he did nor did he necessarily tell people how he did it. You know what he did? He just ministered to people. He just loved on people. He was like, guys, look what happened. Social media. Oh, this is what happened. No. You know what? He avoided recognition. In fact, he didn't go to the major cities. When we were actually in Israel, he went to the down and out, outside. He didn't even go to the big cities. He avoided it, believe it or not. Because he didn't want the recognition. He didn't want people to look to him. He just was ministering. See, I want you to see, this is God in the flesh, walking among people. And this is where he went. This is where God would go. He would go to the places where we would least expect. Do you realize that? This is the glory of God manifest and moving in our midst. And where does he go? Look at this. Look at verse Isaiah 42, verse 3. And I'll close with this. I can hear the footsteps behind me. Oh, Jesus, this is amazing. The Bible tells us that he came, uh, he came to the broken, to the bruised. Can you find that? Is there a scripture there, um, Toby? It's in verse. There you go. Thank you, Carmona. Verse 3. Do you have verse 3? Look at verse 3. He says, a bruised reed he will not break. You know how, can you go to the next one? He has the pictures. I want you to take a look what a reed looks like. It's pretty much mangled. It's pretty much broken. It's on your left side. A, bru a bent reed he will not break off. Yeah, you know what that tells me? He is so gentle. The Holy Spirit is gentle. If you've heard His voice, you would sense gentleness. He will not break off a dimly burning wick He will not extinguish. He will faithfully bring them. He will faithfully bring them to the place where He would stir it up. Jesus came. See, in order for us to bring about transformation, we think about all the big stuff, you know, like, oh, all this, let's rally together. No, you guess what? No, it's not. It's Jesus ministering to what? Those who have been broken, those who have a smoldering record, her lives are just about to be snuffed out. I have no purpose. I'm, I'm hopeless. How many of you was a broken reed? How, how many of you was a smoldering wick? And God came at the right time. I mean, that's one of the most beautiful, that's, that's the nature of his ministry. You know, you know when I was in singles ministry, I would, you know, I would see all these single guys and single girls and, you know, you have, all, you have them all. In singles ministry, you have them all. You have the, the, the ones that look like they have it all together. I mean, like good looking, you know, well dressed. And then you have me, the border border clothes, slippers, you know, I'm Kaliki, you know, totally neglected, neglected, you know, like, don't know even how to comb my hair, didn't even know what moose was, thought it was only the animal, but it was the one that you put on your hair, you know, you know, all these stuff I didn't know, I mean, and I'm looking at all these guys, and you know what, when I came in, like, ta-da, here I am, everyone, and I realized, 
Am I invisible? I know I am to my teenage kids, but you know. Amen. And so, I really believe it's a challenge for us by going out and sharing our faith, telling people about Jesus, is bringing about what conformity. Our world needs to 
get the right skills. Amen. So let's bow our heads this morning. How many this morning says, Pastor Mel, I want to make a difference. I've gone insensitive. I've gone crowds. Or maybe I've been becoming inactive, but I don't want to be active again. Because we do have the strength of the Lord. We do have His presence. And we do have His power. Hallelujah. This morning, Father God, what it takes to transform a nation, it's the servant of the Lord. It comes down to that, Lord. When they stood before the court of the Lord, when Isaiah said, Who? What's the answer? What's the solution? It seems like cliche, Lord, the way we say Jesus is the answer, but really, He is the answer. And so, Lord, speak to our hearts as we worship you this morning, as we close. Everyone needs compassion. Thank you, Lord. A love that's never failing. transform your life today so this morning if you're hearing this for the very first time says pastor mel when i look at his righteousness when i line myself up i'm pretty messed up man i'm pretty messed up he's the measurement he's the standard says wow i am pretty crooked if you're crooked today but you want to get straight with god you want to get in proper alignment with god you can give your heart today let's pray this prayer if you want to get right ask jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, that you will serve Him, even as we heard that you will give your whole heart to Him, that you would serve Him 
from this day forward. Let's pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Please forgive me of all of my sins. Lord, I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done. Cleanse me with your precious blood. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior today. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the word. That the Lord, Lord Jesus, you are the light to the nations. We are to be light to our nation, Lord, to our surroundings, wherever we are. But thank you, Lord, that we are your chosen. That, Lord, you love us unconditionally. You approve of us. You delight in us. But at the same time, Lord, you've given us your spirit. Help us, Lord, to be truly people that would implement justice and righteousness in our own personal life. But, Lord, that others will see. And they would see that there is a need for Jesus in their lives. Help us to be a witness, Lord. And, Father, we thank you. Bless your people as we go. And, Lord, help us to realize the broken reeds and the smoldering wicks that are around us that truly need Jesus in their lives. And, Father, we thank you. Go with us and bless your people now. Go with them. Keep them. May you make your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you guys and be a witness for Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Those online, thank you for visiting with us. And let us know if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Would you would like to know that would truly bless our hearts. God bless you and have a great day today in Jesus. Amen. God bless you and aloha.